cheese. <gasps> the F word and travel. With an HSBC Global Money account, you can drop f***s from Acapulco to Zurich. That means no f***s here. Bonjour. No f***s here. Howdy. And definitely no f***s here. Pay no HSBC fees overseas with a Global Money account. HSBC UK. Opening up a world of opportunity. Available to HSBC UK customers with an eligible current account. Exclude some accounts such as the HSBC Basic Bank account. For mobile banking app users only. Non-HSBC fees may apply. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hello, and thank you so much for being with me today. Today, we're going to talk about music and sound effects in nonfiction books. A lot of people don't think about how you might use music and sound effects in nonfiction, but I do. And so I'm going to share with you my thoughts, both about the considerations and the kinds of places we might use them and why, and then also some of the technical details that may be particular interest to audio engineers, but also should be of great interest to authors. So here we go. First of all, the considerations with nonfiction audiobooks in terms of the use of music or sound effects. The first is As always, if you've been listening to my podcast for more than one episode, you've probably heard it more than one time. And that is we are always trying to create the best listener experience. And the second is related to that with nonfiction. And that is about bringing the content or the message to life in what is most likely to deliver for the listener a transformative experience. Typically, with nonfiction, that is really what we're after. We're trying to deliver information and and content messages that is going to be helpful in some way. It's going to solve a problem. It's going to allow people to be transformed in some small, typically, but maybe big way. So music And sometimes even sound effects can be helpful in that process. All right. So as an author, some of the things you may want to give some thought to. First of all, what is your biggest goal? And I don't mean just for the audiobook. I want you to think your big picture. Bring it as big at least as your publishing work. Whatever your body of publishing work is, what is your biggest goal for that? It might be that your goal is to bring people to your website because what that will do is it will expose those folks to the other things that you have to offer. You might be a coach, for example, and what you really want is to be able to impact people's lives through your coaching. If that's the case, then your audiobook can support that goal by inviting people to your website, finding ways that are appropriate and not salesy and not pitchy, but ways that are helpful and appropriate to invite people to your website. Your biggest goal might be to get a speaking engagement Maybe you're just getting started on your speaking career. Maybe you haven't even had one speaking gig yet, but it is a goal of yours. Or maybe you have been a presenter for years and you're always looking for that next opportunity because one of the ways that you can have a bigger impact is to present to audiences. If that is one of your goals, that's really helpful. Okay, so I said your biggest goal in terms of your publishing overall, and sometimes your book or your audiobook might be a lead magnet. It might be all about creating additional content. Maybe it's a way to help people who can't afford your other services, but you still want them to know about them. 
There are a lot of reasons why you may be doing the things that you're doing, right? And so you want to be really clear on what those are. And then we can take a step into just your audiobook project more specifically and think about and what is your biggest goal for your audiobook in that big picture. The other thing you want to give some thought to is what are your CTAs, your calls to action? What are the things that you would like to have happen as a result of somebody listening to your audiobook? What would you like them to do next on their client value journey? Do you want them to visit your website next? Would you like them to reach out to you and book you as a speaker or presenter at their next event? Would you like them to get the next book in your series? Take a look at your fiction titles. What are the calls to action that are important to you? And prioritize them because if you have a lot then you may find that you're kind of sending people in all different directions, and that is not helpful. We need to focus in. Okay, now moving into the question of music and sound effects. We're going to start with music. The first thing is the decision. Are you going to even use music? Now, there are many reasons to incorporate music into a nonfiction audiobook. And one of those reasons might be that you want to set a tone. You want to help put people into a mood to receive this information, this content. And so the music is to support that. It might be that you have exercises in your book or meditations in your book, and you want the music to support their experience, that transformative listening experience for them so that when they are doing that thinking or that writing or whatever that exercise is that you have asked them to do in the course of the audiobook, you want to support them with this music so that they will actually do what you're asking them to do. This will increase the potential for them to have a transformative experience with your content. And I just want to highlight this a bit because... This is not something that you have as much control over when you have a text format book, in other words, a print or an ebook. Many times readers will read right through and keep going and they won't stop to do the exercises or to think about the questions that you're asking them. They're kind of just, just consuming the content rather than engaging with it more fully. When you have an audiobook edition of your nonfiction book, and your nonfiction book includes questions that you may want them to answer, at least in their minds, if not written down, you may have meditations that you would really love for them to do. You are trying with your content to create a transformative experience for them, but you are really limited if you only have the text, right? With the audio, there is, you're in a kind of analog time. They are listening through your audiobook. And when you support them in the process, they are so much more likely to actually fully engage and do the exercises that you have laid out for them. Okay, so that is one of the biggest reasons to incorporate music in an audiobook. And I'm not saying that every nonfiction book should have music. It doesn't always make sense. We're always just looking for what's going to make the best experience for your particular book. Okay, let's move on to the question about sourcing. What's important here is finding the right music and the right sound effects, if you're using those, that is going to be appropriate for the audiobook. With music, you want the the tone or the feel to match your content. Just uh, some really easy ways to differentiate that that I think are pretty obvious is if you have, let's say you have a health and wellness book or one that's uh, sort of maybe, uh, maybe it's about meditation. That's a real easy one, I think. 
that's going to have a very different feel than you if you have like a high powered energetic business book. Maybe it's about networking or something that just has a whole different feel to it. So you're not going to want to use meditation typically in this like energized bullet, you know, this this book with lots of bullet points. So you're looking for music that is going to be appropriate, that's going to fit the content, right? Okay, and then as a general rule, you're going to want something, if it is going to be underscoring the, any of the words, even if it's in the process of a fade out or fade in, but you want something that's generally not going to be too percussive. In other words, not too many of those sharp sounds because they can easily drown out words. If they hit right where the narrator has said a word, sometimes you can actually miss out on the word because the percussion was too much. So this is a very general rule, but I, I tend to listen for music that's little less on the harsh percussive side for any audiobook. Okay, then again, will it be underscoring? Is it a meditation? Or is it going to be underneath quotes, for example? Is it to provide think time? Is it to provide time for people to do an exercise of some kind? And is that exercise going to be the kind that requires some really vulnerable, deep, kind of intensive exploration of self. There are a lot of wonderful books that really ask you to dive deep into your own feelings. And it can be hard for many people to enter that realm especially if there has been any uh, trauma or abuse in their lives, stepping into a vulnerable process, a process where they're, they have to, e even if it's just on their own, that they need to let themselves be, be vulnerable to the process, then that's, you need a different kind of music than if you're asking somebody like, what's your goal for the third quarter of this year? You know, that's a very different level of exploration and thought. And so you want the music to be fitting with the content. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about sound effects. Sound effects are less often used in nonfiction, but there are times when it is appropriate. So let's give some thought to how it might be appropriate in a nonfiction book. First of all, Whatever sound effects you might choose to use, you need to make sure that it fits your content, of course. If it's a new age book, you don't want a high powered networking event vibe and vice versa. Some of the ways that you might use sound effects in nonfiction, if you have a meditation, you may want to use a chime. Chimes are really familiar to people who do meditate. And so that's familiar to your audience and is a nice, clear indication and also indication of a transition. And also that chime tends to have sort of a long delay, meaning it will give space for the listener to then make that transition. So when we have a meditation, we're just coming out of it or heading into it, there is some time that is allowed for the settling in or the sort of coming back into the room, if you will. Okay, and then in other instances where we maybe want to have a more immersive experience, you could have the sounds, one example from a book that we have done, sounds of a rugby match at various points or sounds of a champagne cork popping that are going to kind of put you more into the scene, you know, bring you in. And those can work really, really nicely. And I'll give you an example near the end of the podcast, you know, a book with, that you could listen to where you can experience how both music and sound effects have been used in a nonfiction book in some really interesting, immersive kind of ways. Let's take just a short pause and we'll come right back. 
Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners, as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Okay, so when you have your music and your sound effects planned out, and this is something that we do during pre-production, you're also going to be looking at the placement of the sound effects. Now, in nonfiction, this is a lot less of a question than it would be either with children's or with a fiction title, because in those cases, the sound effect might land underneath a word or in the middle of a sentence or at the end of a sentence, and there are some different ways to think about that, how that would work. In nonfiction, typically the sound has the purpose or a purpose that includes guiding the listener into whatever is next. So it's really most often used as a transition experience or sound. Now, again, once everything is mapped out as best we can during pre-production, then we move into the production phase. What that looks like is that the actor, narrator, maybe the author, narrator, whoever is going to do the voicing of the text, records the narrative, and then the audio engineer is going to implement the soundscape plan that was set up during pre-production. Now, there are some things about the mix that are good to know. When I say mix, I mean that that voiceover, which is the narrative, mixed with the music and or sound effects, okay? So some good things to know. It's important to properly balance the levels of music and sound effects in relation to the voiceover. It is really easy to overdo it. I know that because I have heard when I have thought, oh, that wasn't done very well. (laughs) It just wasn't mixed well. And it can be tricky, especially because the mix will sound different to the listener depending on the device they listen with. Now, that might not make any sense, but it's true. It's a true thing. And it's whatever the, whether it's they're listening through headphones hooked up to a computer or earbuds or Bluetooth earbuds or a speaker in your living room or over the car stereo, Each way that you can listen to a mix and each device from laptop to iPad to another laptop, it changes. And so it's not doesn't change in a huge range, but it changes enough that it is kind of tricky. So if you are listening to a mix of your audio book and you think, wait a minute, that sounds out of balance. The first thing to do is to listen to it on other devices and then see if you have a consistent experience with that. And then you would make a request from your producer or audio engineer to adjust the balance. So finding a balance that works in general across many devices is what you're aiming for. Now, sometimes you'll need to make tweaks after it's mixed. That is extremely common. So don't be surprised if it's not perfect first time out. You know, it's a very creative process. Sometimes also you need to discover that the fade time for music that you planned out, you thought would be good, it it doesn't work as well as you thought. You may need a longer fade or a shorter fade. Or maybe you've done a sound effect that turns out isn't as good a fit as you thought it would be. 
Now, I told you I was going to give you an example of a nonfiction book that we produced at Pro Audio Voices in which we incorporated some of these approaches that I discussed in this episode. So I would encourage you to go check out A Complete History of the Rugby World Cup by Lance Peaty. And it's a very immersive experience. It's wonderful. So well written. And even I, who like, I didn't know anything about rugby before we started, but I really enjoyed working on that project. It is available on AmplifyAudiobooks.com. That is your very best source for audiobooks as a listener and as an author. It is the only equitable audiobook platform. So I'm going to wrap it up. I hope that that gives you some sense of both the work that goes into creating a nonfiction audiobook that incorporates music and or sound effects. Um, But, you know, if you have questions about your own unique project, then I would love to talk with you. All you have to do is go to ProAudioVoices.com and you can schedule a discovery call. Just go to the contact button or it's ProAudioVoices.com slash get hyphen started. We'd love to talk with you about your project. If you are finding this podcast valuable, and I hope you are, and if you would like to support my work, which I'd really appreciate, you can join me on patreon.com slash audiobook connection podcast. And while supplies last, Patreon supporters will receive a Pro Audio Voices beanie and an Amplify Audiobooks button to help spread the word. Have an awesome day. Again, thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at proaudiovoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.